In this video tutorial, we'll do another sale, which will show you a couple of the uh, sale features like discount, editing prices, custom item, and a few other. Uh, we'll go ahead and scan three bottles of water right now. Um, you can either scan the three bottles of water literally with the barcode scanner, scan three times, or you can just input three in the quantity box and then scan one of those bottles. There you have it. The bottles of water are placed on the sales screen with their price. Now let's say we want to uh, give a 50% discount on the next item that we will put on this sale. So we'll go ahead and click the discount button. As you can see you have three options in the discount. Um, the first two are a percentage discount and the third option is a fixed amount discount. The fixed amount discount will just enter a uh, fixed amount, a negative amount, uh, whatever you tell the software to discount the sale by. Let's say it's like a $10 discount, it will enter negative $10 in the sale. Uh, the percentage discounts, you have a, a choice of two for them because since it's a percentage and it has to be a percentage of something, you have two options whether to be a percentage of uh, all the items that are that have been entered in the sale so far like in our case these three bottles of water in here which will be the second uh, percentage discount that says discount all items processed so far or the first option is to actually discount each item at a time as you uh, process it as you scan it let's say or as you enter it so we're going to go ahead and select this first one which will actually give the discount to each item as we process it meaning uh, it's not going to discount something that we have already processed so just the future items will be discounted so we'll go ahead and click next it will of course ask us uh, what the percentage of the discount is let's say 30 percent click OK now this button changed to a different color uh, showing you that the discount is activated discount mode or whatever you want to call it and it's showing that the discount is set at 30 percent so right now whatever items I ring up will be discounted at 30 percent let's say we'll ring up the an Amstel beer one of these buttons that we created earlier in earlier video tutorials that will be discounted at 30 percent this price is with a 30 percent calculated discount so now whatever else I scan after this it will also discount so um, because our discount is still activating here if I don't want to have a discount on the items that will come next I just deactivate this by clicking on the button so now the discount is deactivated now let's see how the edit price function works um, let's say we want to edit the price on these three bottles of water. We'll select that row, that item, and uh, we'll go ahead and click the Edit Price button, and it will just ask us to input a new price on it. Let's say even $4. And we just edited that price. Now let's say we'll, uh, we'll scan another uh, bottle of water and let's say this was a mistake that we're later gonna wanna delete so to delete an item you select that item on the sales screen and you hit the delete align button now let's say we wanna um, accommodate the customer with a custom item let's say they have a special request of something that we don't have in inventory but we can accommodate them and we've decided to do so uh, we'll do that with the custom item button it will just ask us for confirmation just in case if we hit it by accident or something and it's asking us to input the name of the custom item let's say this is a large coffee go ahead and click OK now it's asking us to input the description for the custom item let's say large coffee custom whatever description you like I'll go ahead and click OK now it's asking us for the sale price let's say $1.50 and the tax amount in percentage let's say 7% is the tax and after you hit OK it's gonna place it in the order 
So as you saw, it just asks you for a minimal required um, attributes that it needs to make a sale of an item that you didn't have an in inventory at all. Now let's say this customer is going to pay with a check. So we're going to select the check option in the payment method options. And we'll go ahead and click tender. Now it's asking us for a check number. If you want to tie the check number to this purchase, to the data about this purchase, that's very useful in case you know something goes wrong down the line and uh, you want to look up something. Uh, you, the check number will always be tied to the data that our software has stored on this purchase. So you can always easily find which check corresponds to which uh, check sale. Uh, of course, if you do not like to keep track of this, you can just um, you know, click OK in here and don't write nothing down or write whatever you like. Now the customer info screen is up again and I'd like to show you how um, this feature looks like, how it works when you're entering a customer that has been entered in here previously, a returning customer that exists in the database. As we spoke earlier, you can enter the first name and the last name as a unique identifier for a customer and it, as soon as you tab away if it's an existing first and last name it will uh, fill in the rest of the information or you can do the same with the, any of the phone number fields or with the email address field pretty much any unique identifier let's say we'll uh, fill out the home phone number and as soon as you tab away or click on another field the rest of the information fills out for you so now you have uh, basically these two options which is to update if you want to edit some of this information or put new information here or click no changes if you have nothing to change about this customer.